Uh, hello, friends. So I'll be giving a, just a snippet review on this particular topic in the light of uh, our new trainees for DRLB who have come. So this question was asked in uh, FCICM, that Australian primary exam. So it's an important concept. Most of the anesthesiologists possibly would be aware. So I just thought it's good to revisit. And I've tried to put a little bit of a clinical context from the physiological standpoint on the importance of oxygen cascade from atmosphere to mitochondria. So this was a question asked in 2015 FCICM Australian primary exam. So I wish to acknowledge my new colleague, Mohamed Tafsal, who is a first year DRNB. So he made a presentation. So as the name sounds, cascade is uh, sort of a waterfall. It is, uh, refers to the uh, waterfalls or the downward trend in the in, in whatever uh, situation we may be referring to. So basically we are looking at how the oxygen uh, goes through the transition from atmosphere to mitochondria, how the, there, is, there is a change in the oxygen levels or oxygen concentration. So I'm sure most of you, as you would know, that the oxygen present in the air given by God is 21%, approximately around 21%. And at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is around 760 millimeter mercury. So when you multiply 21 into percent into 760, so at atmosphere, at atmospheric air, so the oxygen levels will be 159 millimeter mercury. So as we breathe in the air and the oxygen, so there is a humidification process that happens. So most of you are aware that our nasal cavity and our throat uh, has this humidification process. So for which we need to add in this water vapor pressure, which is 47 millimeter mercury. So your oxygen level starts coming down because uh, when you add 760 minus 47 millimeter, which is the water vapor pressure. So we would multiply 21 into 713. So your oxygen level or the oxygen PaO2 at uh, lower respiratory tract or the isothermic point is around 149 millimeter mercury. So it's 0.21 into 713. So as the air goes down into the alveoli, uh, so then there would be further drop in the uh, so in the oxygen level. So that would be around 673. So your alveolar oxygen, so there is a carbon dioxide also that comes into play at the alveolar level. So, so the alveolar oxygen, which I'm sure most of you would have studied, is by this equation. So FiO2, which is atmospheric pressure minus water vapor pressure because the humidification process puts in the water vapor pressure, minus PaCO2 because the CO2 gets admixed in the alveolar level. So your effective alveolar oxygen level comes down to 101. So as you see from the atmospheric air, where your oxygen level is at 159 millimeter at the isothermic point where um, it roughly around the division of carina, it comes to around 149 following the humidification. And once it goes to alveoli where there is a mixture of CO2, your uh, oxygen pressure comes down to 101 millimeter mercury. From the alveolar level, obviously the air has to get oxygenated. So at the alveoli, uh, the air, the hemoglobin gets oxygenated and then it enters the pulmonary venous circulation. So the RQ is the respiratory quotient which is taken as 0.8. So once the admixture of oxygen happens with the hemoglobin, so then the blood enters the pulmonary venous circulation, just very pictorially denoted. So it enters this pulmonary venous circulation where the PaO2, obviously you would measure the oxygen with the conventional blood gas machines. But if you have to calculate PaO2, the formula that we use is 100 minus 0.3 into H, or you can measure. So the measured oxygen minus the alveolar oxygen gives you the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient. And this gradient is usually 7 to 14 millimeter mercury. So this is the whole concept uh, to determine the type of hypoxemia that sets in. So obviously, we look when there is a hypoxemia, we look whether oxygen in the air is low, which happens in high altitude, or patient is unable to take enough breaths due to hypoventilation, or we look at whether AA gradient is high. So because if the AA gradient is high, then we say there are two important mechanisms. Either there is a shunt mechanisms where these alveoli are not participating in the ventilation, 
or there is ventilation perfusion mismatch because this perfusion where after the oxygenated blood has to enter the pulmonary venous circulation is not happening. So, so that is how physiologically we try to decipher uh, whether the hypoxemia is due to low oxygen in the atmosphere or hypoventilation or due to the increased AA gradient. So that is the whole conceptual understanding why we pay attention to AA gradient because conceptually we look at whether there is a pathology at the alveolar level or at the perfusion issue. And if you look at the oxygen at the venous pulmonary artery circulation, it's around 40 millimeter mercury. And as the oxygen gets delivered at the cellular level to mitochondria, it comes to around 1 to 10 millimeter mercury. And uh, the critical point at which the optimal cell function happens, which is uh, called as pasture point, is around 1 millimeter mercury at which some mitochondrial function happens. So below that, where anoxia sets in and mitochondrial dysfunction sets in and not much of ATP gets produced and the cell death happens and apoptosis happens. So that is the whole clinical relevance. So if you have to look at the cascade from the physiological standpoint, this is all it is. So from the atmospheric air to the upper airway to the alveolar level, how the oxygen starts coming down and the various reasons and the uh, factors or the elements that contribute to the oxygenation is determined. So when you look at uh, the PaO2 at the various tissue level, as you see, this, this is the tabular uh, representation of PaO2 at various tissue level. As you see, kidney has the higher, higher PaO2 and the lowest would be at the skin, 8 to 35. So and all the different organs have different levels of PaO2. So now that is from the physiological standpoint as to what happens at the alveolar level, but we are interested as a clinicians to know what happens at the clinical standpoint. So when we talk about oxygen cascade from the clinical standpoint, okay, so this is just another representation of the cascade from the humidification to the alveoli to the arterial to the mixed venous oxygen. So from the clinical standpoint, we take air into the lungs. So from the lungs, obviously the it goes into the pulmonary venous circulation and to the systemic circulation, right? So it goes into the heart. And from the heart, the blood is delivered through the aorta and systemic circulation to the tissues. From the tissues, it goes to at, at that cellular level. So this is a clinical understanding as to how our oxygen cascade works. So we saw from the physiological standpoint how that changes. But at the gross level, so we take air into the lungs, from the lungs, we it goes into the systemic circulation to the tissues and to the mitochondria. And if you sim if you simplify it in a very schematic formation, so uh, we would take this as a lung where oxygen goes into the lung. From the lung, it goes to the heart and the vascular structure. From the heart, it goes to the tissue, and from there, it goes to the mitochondria where ATPs are produced, which are the energy for all the cell function or for optimal cell function and the survival of the cells. So, and there are factors from the clinical standpoint, we need to understand what are the clinical determinants of oxygenation at the lung level, oxygenation at the circulation level, and oxygenation at the tissue level, and oxygenation at the mitochondria. So, what are the variables? So, there are determinants, clinical determinants, which as intensivists we are interested. So, the clinical determinants for adequate oxygenation at the lung level would be the respiratory rate and tidal volume. So the clinical determinants for adequate sort of a oxygenation delivery or the cascade to continue are the heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output. And the important determinants of the tissue level is the diffusion. And at the mitochondria, the important determinants are the metabolic rate and the temperature. So these are the determinants of the oxygen cascade at various levels, at the lung level, at the cardiovascular level, at the tissue level, and at the mitochondrial level. In addition to that, there is a whole separate mechanism called redox mechanism. So that also has a bearing at the tissue level and at the mitochondrial level. So this is a simplistic representation uh, where oxygen cascades from the vessels to the cells and carbon dioxide comes from the cells into the blood vessels and so on, the cycle continues. And there are redox mechanisms which are determined by reactive oxygen species, which are also very pivotal. The, I showed you the diffusion element that happens at the tissue level and at the cellular level, the uptake of oxygen, the transport of oxygen 
and utilization of the oxygen, which we call it as delivery, oxygen delivery, oxygen consumption, are determined by the redox sort of a mechanisms. And various mechanisms are there. So reactive oxygen species or nitrogen oxygen, uh, nitric oxide synthase mechanisms, all these have a role to play. And if you look simplistically in a schematic format, there are a lot of signaling mechanisms which influence your balance of the redox potential. And as you see, if the balance is sort of a, goes into dissonance, then there are uh, the reactive oxygen species uh, balance goes into some sort of a dissonance. Then there can be DNA damage, lipid peroxidation, apoptosis, autophagy, and cell death that tends to happen. So even at a cellular level, if mitochondrial function and oxygen balance has to be maintained, these redox mechanisms have to be kept in perfect balance and uh, some sort of a synchrony. Otherwise, uh, that would also lead to your cascade getting interrupted at the mitochondrial level and leading to the cell death. So I think uh, if conceptually we understand this aspect from the physiological standpoint, uh, that's all it is to the sort of an oxygen cascade that happens from atmosphere to the mitochondrial level. So thank you, friends. So you can request you all to submit valuable work to a journal of acute care and you can visit my website to react to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you.